Hi, this is Bill Barnes from the Applications Lab with another segment of the LS13320 How-To Video Series. Today's topic of discussion is going to be sample preparation. Simple, right? Like a four-seam fastball. Not much can go wrong. Not so fast. There's probably some folks out there wondering, is sample preparation such a big deal? And I would answer that question with a question. Do you want a result? Or do you want the correct result? That's the question. Remember sample preparation is really all about particle separation or dispersion. To get the particles away from one another so you can get a good accurate measurement and a good representation of the overall particle size distribution. So how do we properly prepare our samples? Well, ultimately it depends on the type of material that you're going to run. For instance, if you're going to run powders, well, really, there's no sample preparation at all. You're going to use the dry powder system. You put them in the, the vials, and with the tornado effect, you're going to get good sample separation and be able to run the instrument without any sample prep at all. In order to properly run your sample, you may need to do some sort of a sample preparation before you actually introduce it to the instrument. Uh, in the case of the ULM, maybe you have to change the buffer material or the carrier medium, the fluid. Uh, if you have dry powders, you may need to put it into a separate vessel, perform some sort of an external mixing technique to make sure those things are properly dispensed, and then you may have high concentration, so you may have to take a small amount to be able to put into the ULM before you actually take the measurement to make sure your observation level is not too high or you have too much material in there. Before running some types of materials, you may need to perform a mixing outside, and then because of the heavy concentration, you may actually be required to perform a dilution to get the material concentration down low enough so when you introduce it to the machine you're not already concentrated. So that may be a two-part sample prep for you. So what other techniques can be used to perform sample preparation properly? Uh, ultrasonication. You can use surfactants which will get help to get in there and help separate the particles you may need to change the buffer material or the carrier fluid within the ULM uh, to a more compatible fluid with the material you're trying to test. Also, it may be necessary to use specialized chemistry to properly mix your sample. Before you perform the sample preparation, it could be powder, maybe in a liquid form. Okay? Also, Beckman Coulter offers a nice selection of dispersants uh, in both ionic and non-ionic form to help you disperse your material properly. Make sure, that, again, those particles are separated from one another to get a good measurement of the particle size distribution. After you've added materials together to perform the mixing process, it may require stirring, it may require rolling, tumbling, shaking, a vortex mixer, again, ultrasonication, any of these techniques that help to get your materials properly mixed and separated. One last consideration it might actually be the first consideration, and that is, do I run my material wet or dry? I actually would recommend you perform both wet and dry. That way, you'll have a good idea to contrast the two analysis techniques, and also, it's a good chance that those two techniques actually might correlate very well with one another. If you've noticed throughout the course of this video, I've changed gloves, I've changed smocks, I've mixed things around a little bit, and that's how it is with sample preparation. If at first you don't succeed, you try, try again, but you try different techniques. There is no silver bullet. There is no one size fits all. You will have to customize your sample preparation that best serves the needs of your materials. This has been another edition of the LS13320 How-To Video Series. I'm Bill Barge reporting. Good day.